Welcome back to another episode of Talk Dead to Me, the only Walking Dead podcast with the guts to start at season 10. I am your host, Johnny O'Dell. I'm the social media manager for The Walking Dead. With me, as always, is podcast producer Alexandra August and Skybound Games producer Woody Tondorf. Guys, how the hell is it going? Greetings received. Thank you. We will now execute podcast. (laughs) Ah, Damn it. Alexandra, Uh, did you get a robot instead of Woody? Look, it's just for today. And he's fine. Okay, great. Jesus. Download, Uh, new patch, and everyone's unsubscribed. All right. (laughs) Everyone, speaking of subscriptions, uh, if everyone listening to this could please tell one friend about this podcast and help spread the word a little bit, or uh, give us a review, give us a rating on whatever platform you have chosen to listen to us on. We are available on all major platforms. Tell your friends. Uh, We are also available on YouTube as well. Yeah, so go watch us or listen to us there. Uh, so this week, guys, we talked about it last week. We are doing an all Daryl episode. Ew. Grunt happily. Uh, we've already done a Negan episode. Last week we did a Michonne episode. And now we are covering the man, the myth, the dirty legend himself, Daryl Dixon. So buckle up. Grab your crossbow. Grab your necklace of ears. Grab your hair grease. Get ready. Oh, but before we get into that. Really quick, uh, just some quick, we didn't really have much news this week, but AMC did decide to slowly release a bunch of images from the second half of the season. Uh, We're recording this on a Wednesday, so there's probably a truckload that have come out since you are now listening to this. Uh, Really quick, from the ones that we've seen so far, what are your favorites, guys? I think my favorite is uh, Zeke and Jerry and company at the border. Jerry's alive! Uh, Jerry makes it out of the cave! Hey, hey, spoil- hey wait a minute. Hey. It could be a red herring. Well, I mean, I don't think... I, I think it's... In terms of Jerry getting out of the cave and that being a red herring, I'm not sure I see how that's possible. So I think we can safely say, and I think it's kind of interesting that AMC released this photo knowing that people were highly questioning who's going to make it out alive. Um, we can, I think we can safely say Jerry's out. But I think also we can safely say that like there's some sort of, given the photo with Gabe, like there's going to be some sort of offensive uh, in some capacity, like they're at the border, ready to like, rah, like it's it's like Battle of the Bastards, ready to go. Wild That's things. There, there, yeah, that there's a picture of Gabe with like uh, with a bunch of guys, and and Gabe is holding a shotgun. And I'm gonna tell you, every single one of those guys in that picture who's not Gabriel is fucking dead. <laughs> I, I'd well, get real nervous if I was joining that away team. Like my like my, I have a good friend, I have a close friend who has uh, only who has the vision of one eye and not two. And when it's dark, like in a movie theater, he's night blind. Like he literally can't see shit. So I'm, I question the intelligence of letting Gabe lead this offense, like on the ground. Yeah. Night blind's a hard one. Um, uh, my favorite picture is actually this picture of Yumiko, uh, Eugene and Ezekiel. I'm showing it to you guys right now at home. You can imagine they are in front of what seems to be a big building. Mm-hmm. Um, now, I can't give too like much garage? away, but I did tweet this, so it's already out in the world. So if I'm going to get fired over it, I would have already been fired. Um, this, I just wish I could tell you guys what they're looking at. They're looking at something that will excite you. And I can't tell you what it is unless maybe they reveal it in the 40 other images they're going to slowly release I mean, I, it's like the Iowa caucus here. It's like, well, when are we going to get an ending to this? So, anyway. I, li- I like the idea they're looking at just like a giant billboard of like <laughs> Beta as like the country singer being like, now playing at like the, the Bellagio or something. And they're like, what in blue hell is this? Yeah. <laughs> Not that, <laughs> that they would, would know great. his face. I don't think they've ever actually like seen him unmasked. Oh my but God. I don't I feel- know. But to that point, like if we got some kind of Easter egg where they d- venture into some metro- met- metropolitan area for some reason and there's like one of those just side of a building mural yeah. billboard advertisements for like Deacon Crane, country singer. And um, that, was, that like, was really stereotypical of country singers. And that, all right. uh, yeah, like, but yeah, country singer. And then they just slowly walk by and we're all like, because <gasps> it's Ryan Hurst. Eugene celebrates his whole catalog, of course. Oh my! Oh yes. Also, Eugene's wearing a great hat in that picture. It's a good hat. It's it's vaguely cowboyish. It's like it wants to be a Grimes hat, but it's not a Grimes hat. Not a Grimes hat. All right. So now we're gonna move on to the Daryl Dixon episode part of this. Uh, Daryl's been here obviously since season one, episode two. Uh, we've been very familiar with him. He's a fan favorite. He's really evolved through the years. Uh, we've gone ten seasons in, and he continues to evolve, which is what is so good about covering him on this episode. It's such juicy material. You think you get him figured out 
and then all of a sudden something comes in and then he becomes a totally different person. He's growing. And since Rick has left, honestly, he's become a way uh, more rounded character. It says something to the uh, to the quality of the acting and writing for the character that he was uh, the only original character who we were getting. And I think he's the only one who survived through all of this process. So it's the the fact that he's been able to take hold with the fan base so well and get that mm-hmm. whole like if Daryl dies we riot type of like fan base that like he's just done an amazing job. That Daryl dies we riot thing is totally real. I remember being in Madison Square Garden for my first New York Comic Con panel, at my New York Comic Con Walking Dead panel, and the, this girl very sweet got up to ask a question. She's wearing angel wings, clearly a Daryl Stan. Um, asks some asks a relevant question to season eight, I think, and then finishes it, finishes it with a very sweetly, "Oh, and if Daryl dies, we riot. <laughs> <laughs> we riot at dawn." Yeah. I, I believed her totally. <laughs> I have a tank. Um, I was actually there in season six when he came into Madison Square Garden for the New York Comic Con panel on a fucking motorcycle. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Literally come rode on. in on a motorcycle, and the fans were going crazy. Like, you'd think The Rock was there or something. Like, it was nuts. Like, oh, it's like, oh, this is like its own WWE event, pretty much. And we're going to get into WWE stuff Oh, they were doing later. a whole age. Uh, I, I mean, the permitting alone. Like, I'm amazed that he actually got to do that at Comic-Con. He, I'm more like, surprised he did it at MSG. He did, yeah. And it wasn't even like he was like, you know, they faked it like carpool karaoke. Like, he was actually on a motorcycle. Like, not yeah. getting towed. He rode it in. Brr, that brr. happened. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was... A sight to behold. It was pretty great. I was just there with my phone, um, taking pictures and stuff. That, that's my equipment. Professional <laughs> stuff here. All right, so uh, it's hard to sort of encapsulate, like, everything that's so great uh, about Daryl or the things that we love the most. Um, so we're going to kind of break it down into sort of our best moments, similar to what we did with Negan and Michonne. Um, yeah, if you've seen the previous episodes, you you know how this goes. Just buckle in. It's going to be great. Well, no one's seen the previous episode. I always do this. If you have listened <laughs> to our previous audio podcast, which cannot be viewed because they're audio only, because well, Woody's a big dum-dum. They can watch it on YouTube, and they can stare at our it's thumbnail for boring. 47 minutes straight. That's fair. Eventually, so yeah, they can't watch us. not a lot of people fair. have spotted any of the Easter eggs that we put into those videos, but maybe one day they will. I know, yeah. We have a lot of like Tyler Durden sort of like you know millisecond like things, so you just got to watch out for them, and they will appear if you stare at it long enough. Actually, a lot of things will appear if you just stare at anything long You've enough. You've probably especially already the seen them. Um, yeah, and it, we, we put a lot of controversial, you know, subtext in there. Anyway, let's get on to Daryl. So, um, Alexandra, why don't you start us off with uh, some of your favorite favorite Daryl moments, or maybe just one favorite Daryl moment. Yeah, uh, don't get greedy. Or maybe zero, you know? Why don't, actually, let's yeah, start let's with Woody. Skip. Yeah, okay. actually, <laughs> as it should be. I'm just you guys kidding. know that I can mute both of your microphones. <laughs> that is true. She does have a... Um, comically large mixer <laughs> and um she could do a lot of things she could probably alter our voices uh to really embarrassing things anyway she's oh, already done that it's the Look. flashing red button that you have behind you that says end podcast that you always kind of like just make a motion towards it freaks me out <laughs> yeah i could just end the entire thing she also has two uh, archers behind her uh both pointed arrows at us so that's uh oh funnily enough named carol and daryl oh okay thanks guys i feel like their arms are getting numb Nah, they're well trained. Okay, so I don't have I don't have so much a favorite moment as I have a favorite line that I have decided is my favorite moment because I just really want to listen to it. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, best let me go. Nah, I think it's better. Fuck that one. Chokehold is illegal. <laughs> <laughs> Chokehold is illegal. It's just I love that line because it's Daryl's essentially like I think it's his not only his first episode it's his first scene when he comes back to the he comes back to the camp and we're introduced to him and he is this very like he's um like he is a miscreant classic miscreant definitely didn't I look like that whole scene tells me Daryl did not finish high school Daryl has definitely a couple of misdemeanors on his record probably had a court date before the apocalypse and is very happy that that's not happening anymore some overdue library Um, books. And I think, yeah, like yeah, Daryl's story has always been one of a bit of an underdog and someone who has had to learn how to appreciate himself and appreciate other people. And he's still very much a loner, but it's been, despite a very slow process and incremental, it's been a pleasure to watch that character, like, Choco's illegal, um, which is just so stupidly funny to me. Um, it's been a pleasure to watch that character progress into the very reluctant but effective leader that we have today. Yeah, what a what a what a long strange journey for that like for that good old boy ne'er do well who just kind of showed up and and just kind of just made his way burrowed into all of our hearts. The definition of troubled youth. Yeah, 
Yeah, and did you guys like Daryl when you first started watching the show? I didn't love him as much as everyone. I, I wasn't like, oh, this is fanat. Like, I wasn't over the moon for him, but I found him to be one of the most perennially interesting characters on the show, which I think is pretty amazing and a credit to the writing and Norman Reedus considering how long he's been on the show. I'm not tired of that character yet. I thought, honestly, he was a breath of fresh air when I, when uh, when you first encountered him because, honestly, like it's in Georgia. You, I was looking at the comic being like, where are the Hicks? Yeah, like, and the fact that they're like, oh, yeah, here they are. Like that, of course, that would be the very first people you would find, and these guys would be great at the apocalypse. Yeah, but yeah, I I thought he was he was a breath of fresh air from the get. I never really like, hated him, but uh, I was definitely I was actually a really big fan of Shane, like from the jump, and I was kind of rooting for him and his sort of descent into like villainy. Uh, really bummed me out, especially his like you know quick departure. Well, you know. In, uh, at the end of season two. I just, you know, was really bummed out. But uh, Daryl had a lot of uh, great moments with Carol in season two, speaking of, and that sort of, that's not my moment, but um, that's sort of when it started to click with me, like with the Cherokee Rose stuff, oh. with oh, supporting yeah. her when, uh, you know, the big uh, Sophia reveal, things like that. Um, you know, helping Carl out after he got shot in the woods. Uh, that's when we're starting to like round out his character and that's when he really, and then like, you know, cut to the prison, then he's like, extremely useful and he's helpful with the governor and stuff like that so um yeah it took a second for me but i've really enjoyed his journey so far well what was your favorite moment johnny uh my favorite moment actually came in season seven when negan had uh trapped him uh it was just a long series of amazing moments like during the lineup i'm like why don't any of these like yeah sure the saviors have like guns and stuff but like are they actually going to use them negan just has a bat i mean (laughs) this isn't like an impossible situation maybe it is i don't know and um you know, after the whole Glenn thing, Daryl actually had the balls to get up and punch yeah. Negan right in the face. And what did that earn him? That earned him a big old prison sentence in uh, the sanctuary. So that uh, that earned him like a big old prison sentence uh, in the sanctuary mm-hmm. where he was tortured. He was given dog food. He had to listen to Easy Street on repeat, which is torture for me now. They, <laughs> as a quote unquote joke, they play it uh, before every uh, Comic Con panel. Um, do they really? Yeah, yes. they do. Oh, come on. And then they have you some. You just sit there and the like. And just, you just have to take it like yeah. Daryl did. They, you, and they also force feed you dog food. So it's like really like, you know, I thought I'm supposed to enjoy this. I've, I've waited in line for the last press. two nights and. This is just insulting. They, they beat the head in of one person who's waited. And, <laughs> and if anybody moves, they get a second person because that's so, just how the rules yeah. go. Wait, remind me, though. How does it ha- what, how, doesn't it happen in the lineup that Ab- that Abraham goes down first? Darryl, right. Sorry. Darryl it's Abraham upset, that goes down. And, and then, then that's what gets Glenn killed, which is like. Right. So a lot of people. A... Yes. A lot of people uh, sort of rightly blame Daryl. Uh, for mm. uh, Glenn's death. I mean, most people don't, but uh, there were some people who were like, uh, hey, Negan. wait a minute. Um, if he hadn't, because once he did that, Negan's like, that's it. And then. Yeah, which I think, but we like that's such that imbues his prison sentence with such humanity because he, like, you know, he blames himself. Yeah. And it's just and, so heartbreaking. Yeah. And you know that, um, so part of that whole like prison sentence thing, there was that time in the yard where, you know, everyone's kneeling to Negan. Negan's just used to yes men. And so Negan, like, confronts Daryl in the yard, and he goes up to him, and he, he tr- he like, pretends to, like, hit him with Lucille, and Daryl just stands there unflinched uh, or unflinching. And Negan's like, wow, big respect. And then he's, but then, you know, he, he has his goons, you know, kick the shit out of him. Um, but anyway, eventually Daryl gets out uh, from the help of Sherry, I believe. Yeah, I um, think so. Sherry, I think, lets her out. And then he, you know, his his last obstacle is uh, Fat Joey. I know we're not supposed to call him Fat Joey, but that's what they called him. So, uh, Fat Joey, sorry. Um, was he Fat Joey the rapist or is that a different guy? No, no, Rapey no. Rapey Davey. Rapey Davey. Yeah. Uh, Never mind. Jesus, what, um, a, what a fun I, naming nomenclature with the uh, with the saviors! Like, and those are the those are the fun guys. I know it's like they're on a like a the Sopranos. I know it's like they're like in a 2016 debate. But anyway, yeah. uh, they all have like really, you know, derogatory names. But anyway, um, so Daryl, uh, so Daryl has to confront Fat Joey, and you know he straight up kills him a lot. He kills him real bad, and. He eventually gets out, reunites with Rick at the hilltop. It's this big emotional moment where they hug each other, and it's like, all right, let's get this motherfucker, you know? Yeah. And uh, one and a half seasons later, they do it. <laughs> God damn, that arc took a while. But that's okay. I think also we, we, we talked a lot about in season 10 when Daryl give Negan, gives like Negan the credit for being like he's right in this situation. That's like, like so we're still as as 
full of deep, deep hatred of Negan that Daryl is, there's a star- there's a stark difference between Daryl and Negan versus like Carol and Alpha, even though they're I feel like they're the same levels of pain and sure. levels of trauma. And I've always I like I like the way Norman Reedus always balances Daryl's rough edges with his vulnerability and his humanity because it it really really works and I think there are lesser actors who would come across that and you'd see it would be it would feel clunky but with Daryl it's he's very much this you know poor abused kid who has just not wanted anybody else to be abused or hurt right. and despite again despite you know despite the conditions that turned him into like probably a petty criminal before the apocalypse it's uh it's really nice to see him shake off that grime and really grow into the person that he was clearly meant to be 100 percent. and we covered this in the negan episode the fact that you know and i've said it before uh that we've gone from you know negan literally enslaving daryl to daryl standing up for negan in season 10 just shows how much evolution there is and what i really liked about the season seven arc is that by the end of season six you know we pretty much figured daryl out we thought we you know we've seen everything from him and then nope walking dead just hits the big old reset on him and makes him like he's so like and, and we saw that reverberate seasons beyond that like he's still sometimes skittish you know like I mean yeah. he was he's really traumatized got some PTSD from that um, so the fact to see how much he's grown and how far he's come in season 10 is really cool so that's why that's my favorite Daryl moment even though it was like you know torturing Daryl that sounds bad but I just like how he evolved from that that's why I like it so much yeah. Daryl is like a classic female let me fix you vibe like if I like <laughs> oh my gosh like if Daryl were in my like that's totally my MO too it's resulted in some very healthy relationships but yeah like if I were in that group I would have zeroed in on Daryl first 100% so well, you think you can fix him I would certainly try. Is how, I don't think he needs oh, to be fixed, but, but like never, to make him feel better, to like make him like make him feel like he's an okay guy, and to help him process that trauma. I'm a help. I'm a help. I'm a helpful Honda person. It explains the the blue polo shirt that you could be more <laughs> helpful if you again would have the archers stand down. Yeah, please. They're, they're uh, being plenty helpful. Right her as left they are. arm is shaking. It is quivering. Yeah. That's because she's angry because you just told her that I should have her stand down. It was it was a kind request. <sighs> Um, all right, Woody, what is your favorite Daryl moment? I, I'm going to, this may shock you, but I'm going to lighten it up a little bit. Please, uh, someone the has to. Season six, episode 10. Whoa. Uh, Receipts. When uh, <laughs> when they encounter Jesus for the first time. Oh, yeah. Yes. And it's, it has everything from like the beginning of it down from like, it starts off as your like classic uh, Rick and Daryl buddy cops caper type thing. Never Rick, had a great day, too. Oh, my gosh. Every, and it was. That has to be that's probably one of my top five uh, Walking Dead episodes. But um, the fact that they encounter this like cartoon character in the middle of like, <laughs> and they go out of their way to give like Jesus like borderline like not fear the Walking Dead superpowers, but like close to it. Um, but going back to the beginning, like Rick and Daryl have like Rick puts in the CD after Daryl asks him not to do it, and he's just kind of like antagonizing him a little bit. They run into Jesus like. They have their whole snafu with the uh, with the stuff where Jesus jumps them and grabs their like van and they take off and they watch him go. What a scamp! And like yeah, like oh here we go again. And then uh, they're talking about like Rick, of course, while they're like muttering about like oh, our stuff is gone. But Rick's like, there's people out here that probably means they're good. And like if there's people, we deserve to bring them in. And Daryl's like, but not this guy, right? And Rick's like, yeah, no, fuck this guy. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna beat the shit out of this guy. <laughs> Don't do like they get him. He flicks, uh, Rick flicks him, or uh, Daryl flicks him off, says, like, take that, you prick, or whatever, and they speed off. And then minutes later, they hear this commotion on the roof. Like the Terminator. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think this some bitch is on the roof. Like, he was bound by hands and feet seconds after, like, the, he turned his back on him, and like Batman, Jesus was on the roof, just like Bang. clutching onto the ceiling as they drive around, and then Rick stomps on the brakes, he falls off, that's comical, like, there's a Wilhelm scream, not really, but there might as well have been, and like, it's just hilarious, and the whole thing ends up in the in the lake, yep. and oh, it's just right. so funny. And then Rick and Michonne get down. And it ends with Jesus in their like in their bedroom, both of them ass naked, being like, "Hey, we should talk." Anyways, that's just a, probably the funniest episode of The Walking Dead. Yeah, Jesus coming into the bedroom like he's like you know a kid on Christmas, like walking in on mom yeah. and dad. He's like, "What are you guys doing? Oh, we're wrestling. Who the hell? What the?" Uh, Paul, naked. I know that you know this is inappropriate. Yeah. So like, Paul. just 
you could have knocked. You could have done anything. Like you just wanted to watch these people be nude. I yeah. Daryl, I this is weird. Daryl's a delight anytime he's on screen. Oh, honorable mention. Uh, episode four twelve. Still the one with him and Beth, where they go to that oh, like uh, yes, that house with the, the walkers peach and the peach naps and the flicking off the burning house. Yes. It was really great. And this is this is probably the height of the uh, Daryl Beth shippers. Um, well, I think because at one point he they have an unspoken exchange where he talks about someone that he might like they get to a discussion of what daryl would want in a partner and he kind of looks at her and it's this sort of like tacit implication that one of the reasons he's annoyed with all of her stupid boyfriends is because he wants to be her stupid boyfriend right which is and exactly the type of emotional maturity daryl has at that point point. and if you go back to the emily kinney interview that we did which you should um mm-hmm. you know she thinks it was more of sort of like a sibling bond it seems um which is fine um i think the ship name then was bethel um, but you know, I think death would have been better. I'm not mad at death. Either way, it is or a death. it is a Darth. little it's a little tugboat, like just death. a tiny little minnow in the sea compared to the sterling iron sided battleship known as the SS Donnie. Yes. <laughs> Long may it float. Okay, so what is actually There's a been... battle star called Dar- called Daryl Carroll. <laughs> okay, so speaking of Daryl Carroll, we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about uh Daryl and Carroll. Hashtag yeah. Carol, C A R Y L, the biggest Walking Dead ship that has existed all these years. They're both season one OGs. They're the only ones left. And 10 years later, it is still a movie. I'd say it's you, stronger than it's ever been. I think it is. Would you, um, yeah, it was a great season for them too. Like, would you, and you're, you're more plugged into the online, the online community for The Walking Dead than we are, I think. Oh, am I? Um, so would you say that at this point, negating how long people have been on the show would you say that like Rishon has more fervor or would you say that Carol and like Carol does it definitely Carol because uh Rishon has only lasted from six to nine so that's only well, three I, seasons I we've know, had in terms of like in terms of just people being devoted to these people and like how much oh, they ex- uh, like how much that manifests on we mind. get a ton of Rishon stuff we get a ton of Donnie stuff we get a ton of Karzikiel stuff but Carol is Aww. like n- far and away miles bigger than anything else, especially because Rick is off the show yeah. and Beth is off the yeah. show and yada, yada, yada. Ezekiel's and probably not going to make it through the end of this season if yikes. that thyroid cancer doesn't go away on Well, its own. Ezekiel and Carol got divorced. Um, Daryl and Connie are in a cave. You know, maybe they'll just, you know, get married in the cave. Who knows? But um, <laughs> they won't. Um, Here's the, here's the thing that I love the most about the Daryl Carroll relationship. And you were talking about how the fervor for Daryl Carroll is is like the highest of of, of all the, the ships and how people always want him to get together and smooch and stuff like that. I, I think this is this is such a, a, a wonderful, true, real world friendship where these two are so close now that they are they are family members. And I think like could they smooch eventually? Like, yeah, fine, but honestly, like I feel like that would be weird now. After all of this stuff, like I, I, I don't know, like a Kylo Ray thing. Yeah, actually, like I think that's that. Oddly, that is the that's really good. They're Thank a you so much. In the yeah. Force, that's cool. Yeah, I they're... mean, if anybody would be on The Walking Dead, it'd be Daryl and Carol for well, sure. Oh, sure. I, I kind of, I, as as somebody who shipped things fervently and shipped like sunken ships for most of my shipping existence, um, like my. Star Trek Voyager, Jamie Chicote didn't didn't work out very famously. What? Um, st- like Battlestar Galactica, I was a big Rosalind Adama fan, and you know that. It, what are you talking about? That, that? I know it happened, but it was sort it was sort of bittersweet because she definitely dies very shortly thereafter. Yeah, but it's beautiful. Like it they... is. It is. I'm just saying. Like I sort of ship these. I get really excited about stuff, and then it usually ends poorly in some capacity. We all die, Alexandra. I want the, them True. to live together. And, like, have a fucking retirement in Madagascar, okay? All right. And they didn't get that. She okay. had to die. Okay. Um, anyway, and then just a, numerous other ones that just kind of were, like, were, that I thought they were amazing. There was amazing chemistry between the actors, but writers sought to um, eventually pair them with other people. And Carol and Daryl has always been kind of interesting to me because I love those two together, but I've never really wanted them to. I've never been like, ooh, I hope they make out. Like, for some reason, I think to me and this was a surprise to me as a romantic shipper most of the time I was I kind of just like the sort of weird unique thing they have going on yes. and I just want to see more of that because I think their their friendship is is one that would have only occurred had the apocalypse happened yes uh, yeah it's true I mean she was kind of like the you know mousy uh, housewife abused 
you know, person and Daryl was probably getting drunk at a bar, starting fights and stuff. Like they would have never crossed paths, yeah. except maybe at a Walmart, but they wouldn't have ever made eye contact. Totally. And Dude, Aaron Carl Aaron would have been terrified of Daryl, I bet. For sure. And um you know, I actually do ship it. I mean, I like the Carol and Donnie's. I mean, sorry. <laughs> I like the Daryl and Donnie stuff. Um, and I like the Carol and Ezekiel stuff. But I think Carol and Daryl are m- meant for each other, at least as friends. Um, that much is clear. They're best friends. I mean, yeah, but I, I, the, the showrunner, I mean, like, Angela Kane knows what she's doing. Like, she knows that this is, like, a big thing among the fans. And she does kind of keep teasing it. Like, in the first episode this season, we see them talking about running away together to New Mexico. And even though in the last few episodes, Daryl and Carol have been on, you know, a rocky road, it's still, like, they're really close. So if it did happen, I'd actually be happy. If it doesn't, it's fine. Yeah, honestly, I don't think there's anything won or lost by having those two get uh, romantic. I can, I would be just as satisfied seeing the two well, of them go bow it. hunting and catching fireflies afterwards and then making a deer steaks or something. I, I would be ultimately satisfied if at the end of the day, if like whatever The Walking Dead does, tie it off. Um, if Daryl and Carol are kind of like the only two left standing a little bit of the OGs and do decide to... Make their way to Mex- make their way to New Mexico. Maybe catch up with the fear crew if that's still on. I don't know. Let's make but, some turquoise jewelry. Yeah, like I feel like they could be they I feel like believably they could both happily just hang out with each other for the rest of their days. And be, and like even even not even non romantically, I think that they could be like just I think they could be good old buddies for the rest of their days. The I have been told that the sign of a of a good relationship is somebody who you can sit in like total silence with and be just like really fine with that clearly all the three of us are not quite there yet we're working on it well silence Um, isn't great for podcasting that's very true um but i think the you know those two can just like sit in like the woods forever and just kind of be like this is nice if we never said a single thing like that's like the perfect marriage sometimes Totally. All right. So now, what are you gonna... Katie? That is not. It's not my relationship with my wife. Jesus. My wife will attest that all like I'm like a shark, except if I stop talking, I die. So there are there is no silence in the Tondorf household. All right. So uh, as we said, we are uh, recording this on a Wednesday. The Oscars haven't happened yet, but they are happening this Sunday. They will have already happened by the time you're probably listening to this. So congrats to Best Picture winner, 1917. Yep, that's my call. Joker. Wow, that, that would be yourself. controversial. 197. No, I'm just putting things in so we can just put it over you. Oh, gotcha. 1917. <laughs> Three billboards. Why are you saying it like a robot? Three billboards was not eligible for Joker. Academy Award this year. Three billboards came out three, two years ago. Us. Nope, not nominated. The Lego Batman movie. That was three years ago. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to go on to, uh, but speak, <laughs> Jesus Christ. So speaking Ford of- Ford versus Ferrari. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just had to fuck Citizen with Citizen Kane. <laughs> the Goonies. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to go on to a really quick segment. Um, Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've been told to hold my tongue. <laughs> um, all right, so since it is Oscar weekend, uh, we decided to come up with uh, what would be the best Daryl quote uh, in an Oscar speech. And... We're going to just go ahead and, and just do that. If Daryl won an Oscar, I don't know what world this is. I guess we return to perfectly normal Let's not civilization. Too much. Okay. <laughs> He's discovered <laughs> off the like... streets for some sort of Coen Brothers movie. I feel like there's definitely some dude in New York who would have seen Daryl on the street and been like, you could be a model. You have such an interesting face. Like, I love the way you've done with your hair. And Daryl would be like, uh, some dude tried to say that to me back when I was like eight, so it's a no thank you, sir. <laughs> no, I think Daryl would just be like, nah. <laughs> Walk away quickly. Yeah, I think, yeah, that's much more likely. All right. Um, all right, so for mine, it's not really funny. It's just like it would it would apply. Uh, he, uh, you want to know what I was before all this? I was nothing. Nobody. <laughs> that is my first time really trying the uh, Daryl accent other than bad. saying, no, nah. nah. you just got to act like you've been smoking for like 60 years and then um, just kind of slow it down a bit. And that's it. You just have to talk like it hurts. But a lot of people are talking or a lot of people give speeches, you know, saying, hey, you know, started from the bottom, yada, yada, yada. So yeah. this would, that would kind of be perfect. Woody. Uh, I, I think his, uh, his ending would just be... Um, Take that, you prick. 
Okay. Who who's that directed to? Weinstein. I'm not sure. Wow. Yeah, I think Daryl wow. would be like maybe fiercely competitive with his people instead of being yeah. like it's an honor to be up here with all of these. He'd be like, take that, you prick. Yeah. And then I'm I pr- have the worst Daryl, by the way. I'm sorry, everyone. Fuck Daniel Craig. Dan- <laughs> Daryl would also. Uh, you know, go the wrong way, you know, after you're done with your speech. Yes. And they always, they, how do they always, I would say 90% of the time, they go in the it's opposite a direction. It's moment. And they don't rehearse the winning. Like, they don't rehearse getting up and, like, I mean, they rehearse it, off. but just not with the actors. But, like, they've yeah, seen so the they show. They know the where everyone's been going left. So here's the thing with that. Like, you watch that so many times that you, like, your brain is like, okay, they go to the left. And then you get up there and your brain goes, okay, go to the left. Motherfucker, it's stage left. Oh, Actually, it's yeah. stage right. Um, it's like, true. All right, Alexandra, what would be your Daryl line you'd use in an Oscar speech? Um, I think I would go with just straight up, I ain't nobody's bitch. Oh, <laughs> I like that. And then walk off. Or I really like what he, um, I really like it when, uh, when he holds Judith for the first time and he goes, <laughs> I feel like he would say this to the statue. Like, well, ass kicker. You like that, don't you, sweetheart? <laughs> what? He's, Who would he be saying that to? He's to the statue. To the statue. Be like, oh, this is all right. No. I like this. I think what he would say is, I think he'd look at the statue and say, I bet this costs some rich prick a lot of money. Ew. I think that would exactly be uh, what he says. I think he would just try to tear down the whole charade of it all yeah. and just be like, uh, you know, thanks. I'm not turning into Beetlejuice. <laughs> but then, then he goes to like the back where you know have you have those awkward like press conference things where they're like, hey, and then like uh, like the Joaquin Phoenix one from the Golden Globes where he's like, oh, they tricked me into this, and I can definitely see like Daryl with like the sunglasses on and like a cigarette, like chain smoking, like lighting just the one second word one. answers. Yeah, and they're like, so what do you? What's up for you know after this? And he just goes, I'm gonna get shit faced drunk again, <laughs> and then just like mutters and like wanders off, and they're like, okay, ah, ah, ah. I like that. Yeah, Daryl would be fun at the after party. Daryl and and I feel like Sean. Uh, oh my gosh, Sean Penn. Yes, Daryl and Sean Penn would get along. Oh my God. Thick as thieves. Yeah, those two. I would have really liked it also if he just goes up to the mic and goes, "Good dog," and then just leaves, <laughs> just walks off the stage. All right, so now we're going to go on to the voicemails. We have three of them this week. Thank All you guys right. so much. Yay. You know, I asked you guys to provide, and you did. Good job. We are proud of you, and we appreciate you. Now let's see which one of you are wrong. All right, so today's dumb. So this week's voicemail question of the week, what reality show would you cast Daryl on, and how far would he get? How do we come up with these? Uh, You guys are just brilliant, brilliant people. It's meetings, collaboration. This is how you get to this level, folks. All right, so let's start it off. Hi, my name is Melina, and I wanted to say I think that Daryl should be on the show Man vs. Wild. I think he should be on there because he is a survivor, and I know that he can, he can get through anything. I mean, um, I know for a fact that he will be a good player on the show. After, he's a good actor for everything. Thank you. Perfect. Top-notch answer from Molina. I think that's what, like, every time I thought about my own answer for this, I was like, well, obviously Man vs. Wild. Or any type of survival show. Like, survive, well, maybe not Survivor, but... What? He could... What a, he would he destroy could do, Survivor. He could do Survivor, but I feel like he would get way sick of the bullshit interpersonal games you have to play. But on that oh, note, yeah. here's why I think, like, uh, Daryl is, like, the best and worst thing that could possibly happen to Man vs. Wild. Because you know how Bear Grylls got... There was that, that whole controversy about how they film Man vs. Wild where, like, Bear Grylls in between, like, they go to, like, a motel and, like, right. the crew is perfectly fine and he's never in any real danger. I can see Daryl, like, we're just talking about, like, real Daryl Dixon is there with Bear Grylls and he would just assume, like, oh, I love the show, this is great, I'm, you know, a big fan. And then he sees that it's just a TV show with, like, the crew and everybody, like, helping him out and he'd be like, no, fuck this. And, like, immediately, like, tosses all of the crew's equipment and, like, food and supplies into, like, a <laughs> lake. And he's like, now we're really going to do it. Let's see what happens. (laughs) Bear Grylls is like, we're off the rails. He's the only one who walks away with Daryl, but like he's missing a leg type thing. Like I would love to see that. On a leash by the end of it. Oh my God, yes. And he's like, he's got Bear Grylls like a fireman's carry. He just kills Bear Grylls and just like wears his his clothing. Um, That's That's what what Beto would do. Oh, right. Yes. All right. Next one. Hi, this is is Chelsea. 
from Tampa, Florida, and I would love to see Daryl on The Real Housewives of Atlanta. Yes. <laughs> He's regular. Those women are so confident, and they're a glamour squad, so they could pull Daryl out of his uh, shyness, pull him even more out of his shyness, um, get him cleaned up, shaved and everything, and ready for Connie. I think those girls would uh, be a Aww. great confidence boost for him, and the women on that show would absolutely love him. Mrs. G, I'm now shipping Candy Burris and Daryl Dixon. That's for you, Mrs. G. And I, Miss, Miss G, that was amazing because I also desperately need Daryl to meet a glam squad just once. So uh, I've been looking through, uh, for reasons, uh, a cornucopia of Walking Dead fan fiction for future reasons that we'll get into. But I found a pretty good entry where... Uh, <laughs> Where Rick nominates Daryl for Queer Eye. Oh, damn it. That was my reality show. Oh, one. really? Oh, Fuck. shit. Oh, it's so good. I'm sorry. But, like, the but the thing is, like, and here's why it's almost good. They get into, like, just the very beginning of it where Daryl agrees to be part of the process. But I want to see that show. Yes. Like, I need to see JVN and Daryl Dixon, like, just get a beer. Yeah. But um, uh, the builder guy, shit. Bobby. But, yeah. I'm so I know I because <laughs> I mean it's like if you can't do it don't take it it's yeah. I, it's insulting because Bobby is like the best person in the entire show like yeah. JVN's fine he's an icon whatever like what does Karamu do I have no fucking he clue. talks to you about your feelings he reads a poem so and he dresses different. awesome he does get like ninety percent of them to cry sure. But meanwhile, we got Builder Boy over there like making fucking art within four walls like the stuff he did in Japan. Was a was a haiku. Yeah, it was magnificent. Yeah. It was art. Yeah, you know I completely agree. I that was actually before we get on to the next voicemail. That was definitely mine. I think that would be hilarious. Love to see like like especially like where he was before Carol found him after the time jump, where he's like living in like you know a tent basically with dog uh, on the side of the river. And I would just love like a tent all... down by the river. <laughs> yeah. Anyways. <laughs> Queer Eye with Daryl is fantastic, but uh, Ms. G, that uh, Real Housewives of Atlanta with Daryl is an exquisite answer. Yes. All right. Last voicemail. Hi. This is Mia June calling from Germany, and my answer to your question is I would like to see Daryl Dixon on the circle. Ooh. I think it would be interesting to see him... Uh, dealing in social media since he's socially awkward, I think <laughs> it will be really entertaining. <clears throat> That's it. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> oh, that... What's the name again? Mia, first of all, great English. Uh, you know, I don't know another language. I wish I did. Um, so, assuming you know both, good job. I great took, answer. I took one semester of German and it is, I am horrible with it. So, uh, but more importantly, Mia, an excellent answer again. We went from like answer. all three of these are incredible. Absolutely. Yeah, I was worried that we were just going to get a bunch of like survival shows from yeah. people because it is it, it's Naked like and Afraid, yeah, Survivor, yeah. Amazing Man. Race. But these are guys, fuck, just well done. Yeah, outside the box, creative thinking, and the circle. I mean, that's a. I mean, for U.S. audiences, that's a topical one because that just came out on Netflix this yeah. year. But that's been. Uh, that's been a show in Britain for for a little while. Oh, says, says Wikipedia. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Alexandra is actually you have actually watched it, right? I'm watching it. It's interesting because it feels like it's a mix. The cast is a mix between like influencers, yeah. uh, like like who are not trained trained performers, and then it feels like there's easily three people who are definitely trying to have a career in comedy. Um, so it's kind of there. It's it's a really interesting reality show. It's basically six people in a bunch of different apartments and. They have to stay on the show and basically like they interact with each other knowing that one of them is a catfish or one of them could be a catfish. And they basically threw out a series of chats because they only basically you watch these people um, voice voice text for most of the episode. Yeah, you're only getting your messages they, from the other contestants through text, not yeah, through any sort of no video or sound, voice. No sound. No. Yeah. So, you know, you really like anybody could be a catfish. And so everybody has to kind of try and work out who they want to stick around. It's kind of like a survivor thing in that element. So like there are like you can private chat people and you can kind of try to form alliances. But at the end of the day, there's two people ranked top by their peers. And those two people are the quote influencers and they decide who goes home. And then the person who goes home gets to visit one person in the apartment. And it's definitely like you, you really could only be in that game if you are like 
Oh, and that's not necessarily, I don't know that it's social media based so much as it's just chat based. Yeah. I think the, just again from research that I've done, the, do you, I mean, it's spoilers for the end of season one. So I, I don't, don't oh, spoil don't it. Don't spoil it. Okay, I am kind of invested in it. But my understanding is that like the, the contestants like can switch between like catfishing or being their authentic selves. And I'm sure that like, if Daryl yeah. like Daryl wouldn't know how to catfish, he would be like, "I eat catfish. What is that?" Thing? <laughs> I just feel like, like he would just be himself, but everybody would just assume that he's catfishing. Well, in that's all, funny. What one hundred percent? Because there are the, like two of the people who got eliminated. People assumed they were like oh, their catfish, and so the first people who got eliminated absolutely weren't. They just like were so fully themselves. I don't know that it was. Just, they were just like so fully stereotypically a single brand that people were like, "Oh, that's obviously fake." Take that as you will. How did catfishing get its name? Do catfish like disguise themselves? There's, I think I know catfish. Uh, the re- the 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 like act of catfishing was popularized by the documentary, the Neve Shulman documentary that that's predated the series. I don't know where I think catfishing was an internet term for this kind of thing. Hey, if and you know, know the, the answer Adam. and you're listening to it on the podcast, hey, maybe uh, maybe send us a, a message to uh, talkdeadtome at gmail.com. To, yes. Or you can uh, message us at, at The Walking Dead or leave a comment on our YouTube channel because we would like to know the answer to this. Or, uh, yeah, if only we had some kind of like search engine that we could like access. But and... I would rather engage with our listeners. Yes. Oh, me too. Johnny, you know that once we enter our million dollar podcast studio with the two archers who are here and our butler, Nigel, that it is a strictly no, it blocks all cell phone signals. Yes. And I'd also love someone to eventually like create some kind of like fan art of what you imagine this million dollar studio to look like with the two archers and Nigel and us and uh, Carol and Daryl. The Archers. Carol and Daryl the As Archers. As we've established. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Roll um, your eyes at Carol and Daryl. I ship them. Uh, so, is there anything else we have uh, with Daryl? Like, well, what? Oh, what? Well, like, oh, yeah. We're going to do our own shows. Right? Him on, well, also, though, him on the circle, the funniest part of that would be because basically the dialogue between the characters is text, but it's voice text, so we hear it. But people speak in like that stilted voice text thing where you're waiting for it to listen. So I would just like desperately want to see Daryl be like, I think Antonio is the catfish. <laughs> Thumbs up emoji. They, <laughs> I'm just like, that's all I would want to see. You could stay on for one episode and get knocked off. I don't care. Yeah. Um, I'd like to see him on The Bachelor because I want him. Oh, it's, yeah. Because it doesn't make any sense to That's me great. that 10 plus years in the zombie apocalypse, he hasn't had one love he interest. He would be so fucking intimidated on The Bachelor for the first couple oh, of episodes yeah. where there's just 50 women focusing all of their attention on him. He'd be mm-hmm. miserable. Hi. <laughs> so I heard you like the woods. That's cool. Like when they get out of the limo and like do weird things like. I like this. In a bear suit or something. Yeah. It's just three episodes of fly fishing and mm-hmm. all of them are helicopter dates. <laughs> <laughs> they have to cancel the season because none of the women can actually like have have held a conversation with them that's lasted longer than two minutes. Absolutely. Hey, Gimple, can that be one of the spinoffs, the anthologies? Yes. Oh, pretty please. Anyway, um, I would put him on hands down, mic drop, end of end of century choice, top model. <laughs> America's Next Top Model. America's Next Top Model. They, I mean, for 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 those of you who have not kept up with the twenty plus cycles of Top Model, they have now integrated both male and female models, so he's oh, eligible. Progressive. Uh-huh. And they've also gone all age ranges, so he's eligible at any point in time. And I think I straight up, I think he would win it. You know, I've seen some it's GQ sh- suit. Yeah. You know, I've seen some GQ uh, shoots with him and uh, Vanity Fair and things like that. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah, he could definitely model the shit out of some clothes and makeup. Norman Reedus oh, yeah. is, is a like very attractive and very dis- and but like Daryl is such a very distinct like he has his Daryl is very on brand for Daryl. He's figured out what the Daryl brand was and he lives and breathes it every second. And those are always I feel like those models are always in the running towards the end because like even if they might not be able to have the versatility of all the other cast members, they just generally take better photos. So I think he might be resistant at first to just <laughs> go through the entire process. But Woody Daryl, you have one look. No, um. I, mine's a. I'm gonna go two just really quick. Uh, first one because I just need to see it chopped. <laughs> yes. It, just to see him be like, and you've brought a seventh mystery ingredient of squirrel. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I don't know how you you put it through all of your dishes and it's fantastic. It's delicious. It's, it's, it's good. Eat it. And he just it's served with like a Bowie knife in all of them. Like, all <laughs> yeah, right, like that's the presentation. Like, how did you play? I put wood. a knife on it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's dead. You gotta skin it, and burn it. And then just to like see him be kind of uncomfortable, I'd like to see him on Deadliest Catch. Oh yeah, that'd be great. I, I think, don't think that's uncomfortable. I think he'd be great on a boat. He'd like it. No, I I would just like to see him and Sig Hansen just like trading cigarettes, being like, "What do you think? Is this a spot? 
Yeah. I think this is the spot. It's the spot. Good spot. Uh, him on like any HD TV show on like House Hunters or like, <laughs> or, like Love It or List It. Where Property he, just, Brothers. Each uh... one, House Hunters, he'd be like, so who are we hunting? Like, no, n- n- no, no. We're, we're trying to find a house for you. And we're hunting for a house. We're looking for a craftsman. We're hunting a craftsman. No, no, no. It's a type of house. Ha- oh, boy. Okay, you know what? We're just going to ship you over to Tiny House. You're going to be happier there. It's like, uh, do, do you I do you like uh, house. Do you like open concepts? It's like I, I, I made a guy into an open concept once. I, I split him open. I think um, I would love to see a montage of him just wandering through all the really trashy early aughts, late 90s celebrity reality shows like the Whitney Houston, Bobby Brown one. Oh, man. The, Jesus. Um, what, what would he be doing Britney there? Spears. I, literally, I, I just want to see this YouTube video of somebody cutting Daryl into montages of him just like chilling and walking in the background of these things. Uh, like montage, like newlyweds. Whitney and Bobby, the Britney what? Spears one. Fire up the neural networks. Yes, and motherfucker. If Jesus. we can, if we can up-res some of those old-timey things to make it look like 4K, we can put Daryl Dixon in some mid-90s to early aughts reality. Just like TV. him saying, like, I bet this, I bet this, shit, I bet this costs some rich brick a lot of money, like in one of their houses. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Yeah, he'd be interesting commentary on all those shows. Um, you were about six at the time, so we don't expect you to understand this. How dare you? Oh, Jesus. The yeah. Bobby Brown one got dark. Well, yeah. I mean, they like beat For the reasons sh- obvious. shit out of each oh, other. Oh, that's it's... not why it was dark. Okay. <laughs> it was very gross. I'll let you look it up. I'm good. Um, <laughs> all right. So, uh, so like we said, Daryl made... Uh, so, like we said, uh, Daryl has completely evolved it seems, and he ke- continues to evolve. He's definitely become a leader, whether he likes it or not, in season 10. So where do we think uh, Daryl goes next uh, in The Walking Dead? I, therapy. I think <laughs> just, <laughs> well, is there a therapist in Alexandria? First of all, I mean, there are lots of people in Alexandria season to season that we don't question how they got there. Dante for one. Yes. Uh, I was just about to be like, look, no one's questioning like the, the qualifications so, of the medical staff. I think it's within the universe rules that there could be a therapist at some point. Yep. And I would really, I would like to see Daryl practice some mental self-care. I think that he has established how to be a member of a community effectively in a way that works for him, which was something very, very difficult for him. And I think that he's come to a lot of personal peace with just the the trauma that's happened to him. Um, And I, but I would, I would, I would just like a therapist to, to, for him to talk to a therapist and maybe like build some good habits. Um, The cleanliness thing I still feel like might be a sign of depression. I don't know. I would like to, I I really honestly just want to see an episode, like a Sopranos type Dr. Melfi and Daryl episode where we just sit and talk about it. That would be, I mean, yeah, you'd have to, you would have to drug and like hogtie Daryl and put him on the couch for 45 minutes. Um, I mean, he's got a therapy dog, so so that's a step in the right this direction. Is true. Yeah. That's true. Uh, where would, do you think he's going? I would like to see the relationship with him and Connie finally come uh, to fruition. Yeah. I think that Daryl has kind of languished for... 10 seasons being a man on his own and like though the dog does help I think you know uh, he has a family but I would like to see him have a, a romantic love as well I agree and you know I mean again the showrunner is very aware of this obviously uh, in the first episode of season 10 we saw Kelly kind of like nudging Connie about it like uh, you know huh, huh? and she's like oh come on you know but you know there, there, there's something well, and it's really been a pleasure to watch him kind of blossom that part of his character of like trying to learn how to be. I don't think he's trying ever to be romantic, but he's giving someone attention in a way that he hasn't before. And he's prioritizing her slightly differently than he does other people. Yeah. And I think that's been really kind of just sweet and romantic to watch because he's so young at heart. But that kind of stuff, he's so boyish with it. I agree. All right. So any any parting words on Daryl Dixon uh, before we wrap up the pod? Dog. Dog, happy birthday, Nate. <laughs> Not yet. Rushing the side <laughs> off here. <laughs> I Hold on. Daryl wants to say that. The I Dar- like the, the idea. Daryl inside me wants oh, to say Oh, man, that. can we get... Can we try from now on to like uh, get to red carpet interviews and have like the cast wish Nate a happy birthday? <laughs> yes, please. I, I want to hear Norman Reedus birthday. say happy birthday, Nate, for no reason. You you have to go and do that then. Challenge accepted. <laughs> Great. See you at Comic-Con. All right, guys. That wraps up this week's uh, Daryl Dixon-themed episode. Thank you guys so much for listening. Next week, we're going to start talking about 10B because we only got two weeks left yeah! into the premiere. <laughs> Very exciting. And uh, we have some exciting guests coming up in the back half. And then we're going to be doing World Beyond back-to-back after that. And then maybe Fear. Who knows when that comes on? So Who cares? Oh, wow. <laughs> 
The I'm biggest trying, Fear Season 5 stand. I'm trying to Upset. win back all the people who hate me for liking Fear <laughs> Season 5. Oh, my God. I don't know. It's it's desperate at this point. It's, it's a bad look. All right. It's also insincere, Witty. The love for fear just, like, oozes through your pores. Yep. Can't help it. Love it. All right, guys. Thank you guys again. We'll see you next week. As always, happy birthday, Nate. Happy birthday, Nate. Happy birthday, Nate. Hey, uh, Carol and Daryl are full on making out. I mean, God. the whole podcast, you could cut the sexual tension with them. I mean, that's kind of why I got them. It's fun to watch, but like, I would prefer you guys not do it when there are other people around. At least just a you and me thing. If you could stop aiming the bow while you do it, aren't they great though? Just makes me real nervous. Oh my god, no, no. Uh, -uh. like I've thrown rocks at them and they don't break. It's awesome. You guys can stand down, by the way. Oh, and clench.